Hey guys, welcome back from these crazy times. Hopefully you've all been good and safe. In this episode, we're going to take a quick look at the different kinds of project metering that Cubase offers and how it can be a lifesaver when not just recording, but setting up your master bus and streaming. All right, so here we have a basic modern rock project. This is actually from the band The Vandrolls. And these guys got a lot of national notoriety last year for this record. In fact, it landed them in the Sony PlayStation universe on a AAA game called Days Gone. So I'll leave more info in the links below if you want to find out more about that. But at this stage of the project, we had just finished tracking and started kind of the basic mix stage. So this is a really good kind of opportunity to talk about how metering really plays an important role at the beginning of a project. So we're going to use one of the songs off the record as our example, and it sounds like this. At the moment, you're just here in the vocal track. That's this meter. But keep your eye on the drum track meters up here to the immediate right of each one of the drum tracks. So that's our first example of metering, the little dancing meters next to the tracks and the one under the fader view in the inspector. This is the first of four metering options in Cubase. So immediately to the right of any of these tracks, you see that little black rectangular window, and that is given us our live meter readout as well as the fader tab in our inspector over here. There is one difference between these two meters, even though they're functionally identical and show you the same information. You can change the state of the meter. What that means is where in the signal path Cubase is going to make that measurement. So you can get to that function. It's called global meter settings. Simply click anywhere inside the active meter area and that opens the global meter settings window. However, over here in the inspector view, right clicking does not produce that same behavior. This is the setup for all the tabs that are visible in the inspector window. So just something to take note of, while this gives you a larger display, it doesn't give you access to the global meter settings. So basically what this means is the audio flows like a river through a mixer from the very first input to the very last output. And somewhere along that signal path, Cubase is gonna take a measurement of that audio, and then it's gonna show it to you in the form of an animated meter that represents the level of your audio. But where along that signal path that measurement is taken makes a really big difference. Cubase gives you three different metering positions in the signal path to choose from, and the first one is input. This takes the metering measurement directly after the channel's input gain and before everything else, including the fader. So as I drop the fader, you'll notice that the meter isn't changing, it's still showing all of the signal that's coming into the channel. The input metering method is especially helpful when you're tracking and you need to monitor the accurate incoming levels to the DAW from your audio interface. The next metering choice that's available in the signal path is called post fader. So post fader means that the meter is gonna reflect everything that the fader does, but not reflect the changes in the panner. So as we move the panner to the right and the left, you won't see those changes reflected in the meter, but if we drop the fader, you'll see the meter react accordingly. The last of Cubase's metering choices along the signal path is post fader and post panner. And what this means is we move the panner to the right or the left, you'll not only hear the differences, but you'll also see that reflected in the meter below. Also, if we drop down to the fader itself and we drop the level, you'll see that reflected as well. So in this case, it's reflecting all the choices that we're currently making on the channel. The remaining set of choices we have in the global meter setting have to do with the behavior of the peak indicators. In this particular case, we've chosen not to hold peaks or hold them forever, so we have no indicators for the peaks on the channel meter at all right now. In this next configuration, we've chosen to hold the peak meters, but not indefinitely. So you'll see them dancing just above the meters themselves, but then they eventually die out. The duration of that time can be set in preferences as well. And the final choice for peak indicators is to hold them permanently, which means whatever the loudest part of the channel achieved, the meter will reflect that, and you can use that as a reference if you can't see the screen completely while recording or tracking. Cubase's default metering position is post fader, and there's a reason for that. So to help demonstrate how helpful that is when you're tracking and mixing, we've soloed the kick track here for just a second. 
And if we go over to the fader area and we look here to the right of the track, we can see clearly that we're clipping the track. Now, part of this is because we have Cubase preferences set up. If we go to our metering tab here in appearance, we have our metering appearance color set up to clearly show clipping. But to help illustrate that point, when we play this back, in our inserts tab, we have a compressor on here that's just a little bit too hot. So let's look at our fader. All right, and we can clearly see from our clip indicator that we're clipping that track. But to illustrate what post fader actually does, we've put a limiter on this instead. And this limiter is set so that the ceiling is just below clipping. So even though we haven't changed the compressor settings, the compressor is still too hot. If we go back down to our fader and play that exact same track, you'll notice now that that sits exactly where we have the limiter set. And the reason why is because this meter is set to post fader, meaning our fader, it's showing us visual feedback of our signal level at the fader's current position. We could go back up and take off the limiter altogether and then simply reset the compressor correctly. And that's the beauty of a post fader setup when you're starting mixing is it allows you to eyeball things that absolutely are not working. So the next method for metering inside of Cubase is to enable Cubase's lower zone. So we come up here to the right hand upper part of our screen and this three tabbed box here for the zones, we click on the middle one and that enables our lower zone. This brings up the mixer or console view, but this is the reduced feature console view, not the full size one. The same rules apply here. The biggest difference being that on this one, just like up here at the track view, if you right click in the meter area here, you pull up this dialog box that has a wealth of choices. This is where you would set track presets, add group channels, effects channels, those kinds of things. And if we go all the way down to the bottom of the box, we'll see that same window, the global meters settings window. And those same three choices are available to us. We can set our peak behavior. We can set where it's gonna meter from, and then we can also reset the meters from here as well. So, so let's start our playback. So a much larger representation of what's available. We also have a numeric readout of the channel fader position, which is nice. A much clearer view of unity gain. That's the zero indent right here and whether or not we're clipping. All those things are a lot easier to see, especially since this window is resizable. So if you're working on a single screen, this is a great use of real estate. You get great visual feedback. If we reduce the track width, you'll notice that eventually those numeric markers disappear. So they have to be a certain width before you actually get a numeric readout or scale of what the fader information or where the information is on the fader. So just something to be aware of in the lower zone mixer view. The third method of metering inside of Cubase is by enabling Cubase's full-size console view. And that can be done by hitting the FN3 key or by hitting the insert F3 key, depending on which kind of keyboard and which PC style you're on, whether it's a PC or a Mac. For the time being, we're gonna call up our full-size console view, which gives us some pretty significant advantages as far as the overview of our mix. As far as the meters themselves, they work just the same as they do in the view of our single project window with the lower zone enabled. If we right click anywhere in the meter area here, that same dialog window comes up and our global meter settings are here on the bottom. The same thing applies to the numerical markers and the track width adjustments, as well as the window being resizable. But the biggest advantage of the console view is a completely different feature altogether called the meter bridge. And we can get that by going up here to the three tabbed window. Here is our setup window layout button. That exposes all the available choices and we're gonna choose meter bridge. And what this does is set up a completely separate set of meters. If we click anywhere inside the meter area in the meter bridge, we see that same global meter settings, but now we have a few additional options. Its default setting is the peak position meter and that's the typical one you see when you hit playback. So we have a much larger display and at a glance, we can see the mono channels versus the stereo channels or buses. So that's helpful information. But this second choice here is the wave shape choice. This is a unique 
kind of metering all together. We see a center line up here that crosses the entire display, and that is the real-time meter, meaning that once these wave shapes, as we play them, once these wave shapes hit that meter center, that's exactly when we see this meter react. So when we're reading actual traditional meters like the ones down here in our track view, we're only seeing what's happening at the very second the meter is reading the information. But up here, we can see in advance what's gonna happen on the meter. So for example, if we've clipped the track or we have plugins that are causing the track to be clipped, we're gonna see that information down here long before it gets to our middle meter position that shows up on these meters here. Now this may seem a bit confusing at first, but it's an incredibly useful tool, especially when you're tracking. This allows you to see the incoming audio or the wave shape, even from across the room when you're not directly in front of the monitor. And that's a lifesaver when you're tracking, especially if your audio interface only provides limited metering options. If you've set up your mix architecture like we have here, where our tracks are in one zone on the left side, and then we have our buses, auxes, and groups on the right side in another zone, you can have independent meters in both sections. For example, wave metering on the left and peak metering on the right. However, you cannot mix global metering settings, for example, input and post fader cannot be used simultaneously. Hopefully this is something Steinberg will consider in the future as having input and post fader would be very helpful. So here we have the ability to see problems before they actually come up to the meter position. We have all the peak information down here that we need to make intelligent decisions about whether we're clipping the track in real time. And then over here we have all that stereo feedback information for the stereo channel so we can see if something's wildly out of balance. The fourth and most comprehensive kind of metering can be done in Cubase's master meter. And we get there by going up to this tabbed box area and enabling the right zone. And from here, it takes us to Cubase's master meter. And by clicking on the bottom left tab here, we open up Cubase's master peak meter. And then here on the top is all the different scales that the master meter can be calibrated to. This includes GBFS, which is digital full scale, also DIN, EBU, British, Nordic, the Bobcats scale, and some custom configurations as well. If instead we go back down to the bottom and click on the right hand side of the tab, we open up the loudness or LUFS meter. Up until now, we've referred to most of the metering in Cubase as peak or RMS metering, or root mean squared. And while that's been sort of the standard for some time, it measures the electrical power of a signal, but doesn't always take into consideration the frequency of it or the apparent loudness to the human ear. And this concept is really what started what's known as the loudness or volume wars in digital media, especially in CD replication, where the idea was to get it as close to digital zero as possible and make the master as loud as possible. But that all started to change recently when streaming services began to re-encode your masters to a new protocol known as LUFS, or loudness units full scale. This new metering standard attempts to make decisions on your audio based over time and it takes momentary and long-term measurements as well and the idea here is to get a measurement or metering standard that everyone can agree on and that takes into consideration the perception of loudness we'll cover more mastering in a future episode but it's important to know streaming services like itunes and spotify and cd baby will now re-encode your masters no matter how hot you send them in to a more realistic level somewhere around minus 14 or minus 12 LUFS. Cubase Pro's new loudness meter includes that integrated information as well as true peak metering information. This allows us to make a lot more informed decisions on our overall mix before we send it out. All right, so you can see we have an average or ballpark LUFS of about negative 14. So that's gonna preserve a lot of dynamic range for streaming services. However, this is gonna produce a much quieter master, which may be a challenge when delivering directly to the client. So for example, if we were mastering for CD or if we were mastering for direct client delivery, meaning you're gonna give that straight to the client, you might want those numbers to be higher and might wanna use one of the other peak meter calibrations. Either way, Cubase has you covered with both kinds of metering. However, all this new metering function 
functionality is only available in Cubase Pro, but no worries. I'm going to leave some of this information in the links below. There are some fantastic free VST alternatives that can give you similar results from companies like Melda and Voxengo and Ulean. Simply insert any of these in the very last post fader position on your master bus and you can achieve similar results for your mastering and for your mixing projects. So that's metering in Cubase Pro. Hey, if you guys learned anything or if this was helpful in any way, please hit the subscription and notification bells. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Please stay safe and we will catch you in the next video.